Yes, I am aware that most of you aren't really interested in these type of topics, but they happen to be a part of computer technology too, and I for one would like to extend my horizon a little bit and challenge myself with things I'm not fully familiar yet, even if the price I have to pay is to make a fool out of myself. Which is why today I'll present you a network switch from the perspective of a newbie and will set it up for my use cases and will also name a few more that I know of. First and foremost, with this I want to demonstrate what a switch can be used for and what jobs it can actually handle. And while I'm at it, I was hoping to maybe get a few useful tips and some advice from network professionals that are hopefully watching. This my friends is the new QNAP QSW2104-2S plug and play unmanaged switch with 10 gigabit per second as well as 2.5 gigabit per second connectivity. So it's not only suitable for us home office users, but also professionals out there that don't have the craziest setups. This QSW2104-2S currently comes in at a price point of about 140 US dollars. Just to get one thing out of the way, the model ending with 2S features 2 SFP plus 10 gigabit per second ports. A port type not a whole lot of you use. Servers, however, and I for my workstation setup happen to use exactly that port, which is also a reason why today's switch is so important to me. For everyone else on the other hand, the more conventional model might be more attractive. QNAP is offering comparable 10 gigabit per second ports, but Ethernet RJ45 ones. Such can be found on the same model, but ending with 2T instead. Also part of QNAP's lineup, the simpler, more affordable QSW1105 5T with 2.5 gigabit ports only for most users out there. Now before we discuss the mentioned topics, first let's take a look at what comes included with this device. Besides the switch, you also get a quick guide, the power supply with a nice long cable, a plug for one of those 10 gigabit SFP plus ports so no dust gets in if you don't use it, then four small rubber feet you can put onto the switch and a little bit of equipment to attach the device to one's wall. We're definitely given the option for that. Let's take a quick look at the specs. As said before, unmanaged, then two 10 gigabit SFP plus as well as four 2.5 gigabit RG45 ports, a max switching capacity of 60 gigabits per second, 30 gigabits of total non-blocking throughput, and very important to many of us, it's a fanless switch. It's being cooled passively, therefore operates extremely quietly. Furthermore, the device comes with automatic loop detection. The build quality of this QNAP switch is top notch, the entire case is out of metal. A nice little touch the competition most likely adds as well I believe, is that the LED indicators emit green and orange lights to indicate whether or not you're making use of the full link speeds. For instance whether you're in fact making use of 10 gigabits on your 10 gigabit port and same with the 2.5 gigabit ports. Now generally speaking, who needs a network switch and what can you use one for? Starting at the router or modem, imagine your device only comes with four LAN ports. Your home or you all on your own need like six or even more for your PCs, laptops, TVs, consoles and so on and so forth and imagine you don't want to rely on Wi-Fi. A simple and straightforward way to get rid of the issue is to get yourselves a switch helping you extend physical ports. But what's the difference between managed and unmanaged switches? Well, as far as I know, managed switches allow you to go for extremely detailed manual configurations, whereas unmanaged does everything automatically for us. All we need to do is plug something into the ports and bam, done. So for most of us, including myself, unmanaged certainly is the way to go. But what's up with these specified speeds? Be it 1 gigabit, 2.5 or even 10 gigabits per second, do not expect your provider's internet speed to magically increase by simply connecting a switch. The bottleneck remains your provider or radio tower or whichever way you get your internet. When talking of 2.5 or 10 gigabits per second, we are basically only talking of speed benefits within our own local networks which can be even more important actually, especially if you have to handle huge file sizes. 
And just to let you know, do not worry, 10 gigabit ports can run at either 10 or 1 gigabit. Those 2.5 gigabit ports, based on RJ45, can run at 2.5 gigabits, 1 gigabit, as well as 100 megabit. It's all backwards compatible. Nice. But how do I personally use my Switch? My Switch first and foremost is taking care of my workstation and NAS, as well as additional devices I want to be hardwired with my network. As a complete network newbie, I had absolutely no struggle setting everything up, since actually there is nothing to be set up. The great thing about unmanaged switches is that it's all done automatically. Behind the scenes, I connect my 10 gigabit NAS with this specific switch, then connect the second 10 gigabit port with my workstation PC, which is equipped with a 10 gigabit network card. As for the remaining 2.5 gigabit ports, I reserve those for my secondary PC and my laptop, where max link speeds aren't as crucial. All that remains in terms of ports, I occasionally use to hook up specific devices on the spot if needed. You could however also simply put the switch right after your modem or router and extend from there on. Another nice thought may or may not be the extension of different floor levels by connecting several of such switches to each other. The sky is the limit pretty much, and I'm sure I'm missing something, so I'm hoping for the pros among you to correct me. Long story short, a switch first and foremost is a great way to extend your existing network, and by going with 2.5 or even 10 gigabit ports, you end up with some really blazing fast speeds compared to old fashioned 1 gigabit switches or less. Admittedly, I don't really have any other switches to compare this one with, but all I can say is that I've made some really good experiences with today's QSW21042S by QNAP, and all work plug and play exactly as advertised. So as far as my knowledge about switches goes, I can certainly recommend this model. Those of you that don't actually need SFP Plus connectivity surely could just grab the version with RG45 Ethernet ports instead, with the 2T at the end of the model name. As said before, should I have missed something or just in case I told you something that's incorrect, please feel free to correct me and offer some advice. With that being said, thanks a lot for watching and until next time.